Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, September 29th, 2023. Is it just me or did September seem to to fly by here? I don't know. I think it I think it flew by quite a bit here today. And I'm looking at the calendar for today and I'm not seeing anything listed. Let's see. So I guess we're not celebrating a special holiday today. So if you didn't get that piece of strawberry cream pie yesterday, then I guess today is going to be the day to do it. All right. Today we're going to finish up our our talk, our series here based on 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7 where Paul says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we are at the last one, the sound mind today. And if you haven't listened to the other broadcasts yet, I highly encourage you to do that. Visit our website, just look at the few... uh, episodes prior to this one and you'll you'll catch those three episodes there and get caught up with us but today we're going to talk about the sound mind and i think that that above all of these is probably the most important because if you don't have a sound mind you can't love others the way you should be loving others and you can't display the power of god because your mind is not set there your mind is not sound your mind is not stable and it not having a sound mind is going to affect every part of our life so having a sound mind is probably among one of the greater gifts that god gives us and without a a sound mind or a sound mind knows to cast our cares upon jesus a sound mind understands that we can't do everything and i know i'm one of these ones that try to do everything and when i'm at work i try to be the one that does everything and and in reality i know that i can't and peter says here in first peter chapter one and ver- or chapter five and verse number seven casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you Casting all our cares upon God. All of us are carrying around cares today. All of us are carrying around burdens. And if we don't be careful, those burdens are going to take over our thought pattern. It's going to take over our actions. It's going to take over every part of our life. And our stress level is going to go sky high. That's why it's important to know that them to realize that we can't do everything and it's important to know where to dump these cares at and by casting these cares upon jesus and by no way is 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 being negative toward those burdens but rather it's going to the place that they can ultimately get help and when he says cast your cares upon him that's kind of finishing a thought that he had started in verse number six when he says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. We humble ourselves when we cast our cares, cast our burdens upon the Lord. So let me ask you this. What are you carrying around today that is preventing you from having that sound mind that God wants to give us? A sound mind is also sober and alert. You know, if we're under the influence of things, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's of the world, whether it's of other people, you know, if we're we're not sober and under the influence of other things, we're not going to have that sound mind. So a sound mind is sober. Look at verse number 8 of 1 Peter chapter number 5, verses 8 and 9. He says, be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Peter is telling us here 
to make sure that we're sober and vigilant or sober and alert because the devil wants nothing more than to get in there and keep us from having that sound mind. He wants us to have our mind occupied. He wants us to have our mind drunk on the things of our burdens, on the things of our cares, of the things of this world, what's going on in the world. You know, if we're not careful, we could be fearful of what's going on in the world, and that's not what God had designed. That's not what God desires. So we need to cast our cares on him, but we also need to make sure that we remain steadfast, vigilant, alert, sober, so that the devil doesn't get a foothold in there and and cause us to lose that sound mind. A sound mind knows that prayer is vital. A sound mind knows that prayer is vital. Philippians chapter number 4 is where I'm going to go next here. And for some unknown reason, I didn't mark that one. So give me just a second to get to it here. Philippians chapter number 4. And we're going to look here at verses 6 and 7. Paul says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Be careful for nothing. He says, be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. He says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Everything. Be praying for your for your mind to not be a breeding ground for things that it shouldn't be. Be praying there for your, for your burdens. Just because you're casting them to Jesus, just because you're throwing them to Jesus, doesn't mean that you don't continue praying for that. Continue praying. He says uh, a sound mind knows that prayer is vital. Prayer is something we need to make sure that we're doing to make sure that we're communicating with God each and every minute of each and every day. In 1 Thessalonians, I believe it is, Paul says to pray without ceasing. And for many of us, if we spend five minutes a day in prayer, we consider that pretty good. But a sound mind knows how prayer is vital. And a sound mind knows that we need to keep our focus on Jesus. If we're going to live the life that God wants us to live, then we need to keep focused on Jesus. And in in Hebrews chapter 12, chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews is is what we call the, the hall of faith, the hall of fame. And we see the Old Testament people that has done great things for the Lord. And then we get to chapter 12, And Paul is saying that Christ is our example here. And in verse 2, he says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to stop there. Looking unto Jesus. Keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. You know, when you were a kid and you walked around the shopping mall or you walked around Kmart or Walmart or some of these regional stores that we have like Zares and some of the other ones that aren't around anymore. As a child, you had to keep your eyes on your parents so you knew where they were if you weren't holding their hand. Nothing was more frightening for a kid to get lost in a department store or to get lost in the mall or to get lost in in, in any kind of store. So you kept checking your parents. If you have a dog, or if you have a dog pretty much, if you have a dog today and they're trained properly, you notice how they always keep their eyes focused on you so that way they follow where you're going they follow your commands that's the example that we have here that we need to do with jesus we need to keep focused on him so that we can do the things he's commanded so we can follow the paths he has and a sound mind knows that we have to keep focused on jesus for that so let me ask you this today which one of these four things we talked about with a sound mind is going to be the one that's going to be most difficult for you. Friends, we need to make sure that we don't try to be Superman and do it all. We need to make sure that we keep our mind alert, that we keep our mind sober, not drunk on the things of this world, but being sober for the Lord. 
We need to know that a sound mind knows that prayer is vital and a sound mind keeps its focus on God. So friends, allow God to make that, give you that sound mind to go along with that spirit of love and to go along with that spirit of power. The three things that God has given us so that we can live for him, be effective for him, and walk down the paths he has for us. Remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. Then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Hey, neighbor. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about this fence. Remember, we both agreed to pay half. Bob, instead of reimbursing you, I've decided to become a really good person. What? Hey, what's better? Getting paid for half a fence or living next door to a great neighbor? Hmm? But we had an agreement, and you're not paying me. That's a bad thing. But I don't do bad things. I'm, I'm a good person. Why, I've been doing nothing but good things for a whole year. In fact, the most recent and polls show that 99 out of 100 people like me. Doesn't that prove I'm good? Look, if you're not going to pay me, you could at least admit you wronged me. I'm willing to forgive you, but help me here. Why do I need your forgiveness? Everybody loves me. Well, 99 out of 100 anyway. The Bible declares that because we have sinned, we have wronged God, and any attempt at us being good is fruitless until we first ask God for his forgiveness. Have you asked? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. 